Good evening, this is the Lion of Legend, and welcome to Mushroom Oasis, a visual novel, also I assume creepy horror game, where you are attempting to find your lost cat. This game was suggested to me by Lena Zuleta1477 a couple weeks ago, so I'm here to try it out. What is my name? Well, until some other day, in case I come up with a different name, if I could type, we'll stick with Lion. What is my cat's name? Oof. Well, I didn't think that far ahead. Um. She. She. And your cat is... What do you mean? Um... Ah. Um... We'll have a, a male cat. Shishi has been missing for a while now. He was an indoor cat, but had the tenacity of a wild cat on a mission, trying to leave whenever the door was open. Catios and playtime just wasn't enough for the little mister. I figured he'd come running if I left out some food by the porch. Three days later, still no cat. I tried everything I could think of. Asking around the neighborhood, putting up missing cat posters. Sadly, nothing came from my efforts. I couldn't search for him during the day, since they had work keeping me occupied. And there's only so many hours in the evening I could yell around the streets looking for him. There was only one place left I could think of that he might have ran off to. The woods by my house, right across the street. I've definitely caught him eyeing the birds and squirrels that ran alongside the perimeters from the front window, his teeth clicking in excitement. I was no outdoorsy person by any means. In fact, the thought of going in there scares me. But I had to find him, or at least try. The first weekend that came around, I packed up some water. Shishi's favorite streets, and a compass to be safe. I wasn't sure where to even begin looking for him, so I started walking in a straight line, calling out his name every few steps. It certainly didn't take long for me to realize I was way in over my head. Why did I think this was a good idea? It was hard to find my bearings within the surrounding trees. I didn't want to admit I was lost, at least not yet. I could only squint down at my compass as the needle spun slowly. Pretty sure they weren't made to do that. Did I really bring a busted compass on my first venture out in these woods? Figured that would be just my luck. The only thing risking my own safety was my own incompetence. I shook my head hastily. No, no, no. No time for negativity. Shishi was out there somewhere, cold and lost and hungry. I had to keep going. It's been hours. I'm so, so lost. I don't even know why I kept searching, even after the moment I'd realized that. Why did I think this was a good idea? Hunger had been gnawing at my stomach for a while now, having missed breakfast and lunch altogether. The heat and humidity from the afternoon sun was unbearable, but the cooling air did nothing to soothe me. Even if I were to head home, I couldn't even pinpoint where that was. What do people even do in this situation? 
I knew it was baseless optimism, but walking onwards was really the only thing I could think of to do. Surely I'll come across something familiar. I trudged on, my shoes carefully avoiding the tree roots intertwined across the forest floor. But in my weakened state, plus the approaching darkness, I found myself stumbling through the rough terrain. My feet hit something soft, jutting out of the ground. Ugh. My hands shot out as I lost my balance. My feet clumsily tried to find purchase as I wobbled backwards, arms flapping. Poof. <coughs> what? My shoe landed smack dab in the circle of mushrooms, the brunt of it causing a wispy cloud to erupt from the cluster. I stuck my nose in my elbow to avoid breathing it in. I couldn't differentiate one tree leaf from another for the life of me, but I'm pretty sure humans aren't supposed to inhale whatever the hell this was. It smelled strongly of rotten wood and wet dirt, even as it cleared. Something shiny quickly caught my attention. I stooped down to pick it up, gasping under my breath. It was Shishi's collar, covered in whatever the hell those mushrooms released. I looked around desperately for any signs of him. Shishi? Shishi! I coughed from inhaling some of the remaining dust floating in the air. I should really steer clear from this. Pocketing Shishi's collar, I retreated carefully until I could breathe again. Stepping back, I could still smell it. It must have stuck to my hair and clothes. A quick once over confirmed my suspicion with a slight cringe. A thin, yet generous coating of it covered my sleeves and jeans. I leaned against a tree, dusting off my clothes in a naive attempt to get the dust and smell out to no avail. If anything, it felt like I'm breathing more of it in. What used to be musty now turned sweet, and I found myself inhaling even deeper, trying to pinpoint the smell. Cucumbers? It smelled like fresh cucumbers. A tiny feeling crept up my hands and neck, pinpricks spreading across my limbs as a strange heat reached my face. I started to feel drunk and woozy. My senses were numb. It should freak me out. And yet, a strange comfort washed over me. I should lie down. Right now, in fact. My legs gave out from underneath me, my body toppling over at an awkward angle. I laid there, and stared, and stared, and stared. It was nice here, a peaceful calm, the perfect place for a nap even. My eyes grew heavy as I swam in and out of consciousness. Yeah. A nap sounds really good right about now. Oh. Sorry this happened to you, little one. By the will of the forest, may you rest in peace. Hmm? Wait. A human? How'd you end up all the way out here? Still breathing, too. Ah, jeez. I can't leave you here. What should I do? I woke with a jolt. It was warm, but comfortably so. I could feel the weight of a blanket on me as I tried to sit up. I couldn't. I couldn't move my body. My fingers twitched uselessly at my sides as my eyes darted around in panic. Glancing about... I could see the interior of a cabin, or at least the ceiling of one. 
I couldn't see much past the corner of my eyes. Where was I? How did I get here? A desperate feeling rose in my chest. I had to leave. Right now. This was wrong. 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 I wasn't meant to be here. I could hear the crackling of a fire nearby, likely the source of warmth I had felt on waking up. I could also hear footsteps approaching. We'll save, and we'll, st we'll stay awake. I fluttered my eyelids, straining to look at the person approaching. My eyes widened as I took in their appearance, the protrusions from their forehead catching my attention. Not to mention the green skin. The stranger didn't sense my unease as they heaved a sigh of relief. You're awake. That's good. Very, very good. How are you feeling? I blinked. Oh. So sorry. I forgot about that. Here. The person held a cup to my lips, a strong sweet smell coming from the rim. A gentle hand grabbed my chin to open my mouth. I couldn't even move to resist. Don't worry. It'll help you feel better. I promise. Drink up. As the liquid hit my tongue, all I could feel was a vague sense of heat. As I kept drinking, taste and texture returned, the sweetness of berries and chamomile coating my taste buds. Taste buds. <laughs> I could even detect a hint of mint. I lifted my head, finally, hands fisting at my sides as I propped myself onto my elbows. The person kept a steady hand on my chin careful not to pour in too much as in case I choked. I finished every last drop, wiping my mouth with the back of my hand. I stared at my fingers, realizing I had full autonomy over my body again. Good as new. Now, how are you feeling? But better, thank you. The stranger laughed. Oh, I like the way you sound. Been ages since I've talked to anyone, much less with a voice as nice as yours. You know, I don't mean to jerk myself off here, but is this some sort of fourth wall breaking? I brushed off their strange compliments, finally looking around the cabin properly. It was a simple room filled with sparse, but decorated wooden furniture, fit for someone living alone. An open archway to the right led to what I assumed was the kitchen. Next to it, a door was closed shut. Possibly the bathroom. Taking it in, there was a common theme of knitted decorations strewn about. Any available surface had patterned knitted tablecloths covering it. An unfinished project laid beside the bedside table where I sat, a pair of knitting needles jutting out of a pile of yarn from a small basket. As far as I could tell, it looked like the beginnings of a green scarf. The stranger was comfortable in staying silent, observing me as I glanced around. They tossed their hats into the bed, scruffing their hair and making it even messier. With their hat off, their unique features were impossible to ignore. S sorry but who... W what are you? Hmm? Oh, I didn't introduce myself, did I? Hiya, I'm Michael, with a Y. I shook my head. No, no, I meant that, um... Michael stared at me, their left ear twitching. You look very... He snorted. 
ugly? Off-putting? No. Just... different. Different, huh? You're just being nice. Well, well then explain yourself. Um... I mean, it's kind of rude, isn't it? I paused for a moment before pinching my nose bridge, exhaling slowly. Uh, I'm just... Sorry. It's been a long day is all. I should be thanking you. If it helps, it's a... Uh, a skin condition? Is that what you humans call them? The way they said it didn't sound confident. And the ears? Um... Genetics? Right. And I assume the little... I waved vaguely at their... Horns? Antenna? Those things are just cosplay to complete the look. Would that make a convincing argument? I squinted. Maybe. Then yeah, it's... Cosplay. Still doesn't explain everything. Michael huffed a nervous laugh. Listen, I'm just a guy living by himself in the woods. You don't need to worry yourself further than that, okay? Something in his tone compelled you not to question his existence anymore. He's just some guy. Living in the woods. Completely normal. R right. Completely normal. I'm Lion. Michael beamed. Nice to meet you, Lion. I fiddled with the blankets as Michael scooted closer from the edge of the bed. I... I know I already asked, but how are you feeling? Any aches? Sores? Nausea? Intrusive thoughts? Weird impulses? Fever, maybe? Uh... He placed his hand on my forehead before I could react. His hands were calloused, quickly retracting as he gave a thoughtful hum. You seem to be... lucid. That's a good sign. Uh, great. He hummed absently, his twitching ear reminding me of a perturbed cat. Cat. My cat. Oh, shoot. S sorry if this is out of nowhere. But have you seen a cat around these parts? His name's Shishi. He's a sweet little thing, about this big. Skittish, but he can approach strangers if he needs to. I pulled out my phone to show pictures of him, only to find it missing from my back pockets. Wait, where is... I haven't... Huh? Your cat. I haven't seen it. Oh... I see. I slumped against the pillows, rubbing at my temples. He lost his collar, too. Even if anyone finds him, they wouldn't be able to tell where he's from. Damn it. Michael stayed quiet, watching me from his side of the bed. You came all the way out here for a cat. Huh? Of course. To the point where you're willing to run yourself ragged this deep in the forest. For a cat. Do you realize how far you've wandered away from the nearest town? I found you near unconscious. In an area nobody's set foot in for years. For a cat. He sounded like he was holding himself back from giving me a stern lecture as if in disbelief I had such little regard to my own survival. My cheeks grew heated at how stupid reckless that sounds. Uh, I mean, he's not just a cat, he's my family. I, I know it was stupid for even trying, but I had to. Michael eased up, shoulders tense as he looked me over from underneath his unruly bangs. Family, huh? He finally tipped his head at me with a smile. 
You're willing to wander this far for such a small critter. I've met my fair share of lost campers, hunters, and a few runaway teens or two. But someone looking for their pet? You're kinda weird, aren't you? I sputtered, much to his amusement. Speak for yourself. Who cosplays in the middle of the woods? Michael laughed, a deep hearty one resonating from his chest. Fair? I think I'm starting to like you, lion. Um, likewise? His smile widened, but something about it was off. He was showing too much teeth. It felt like he hadn't talked to someone in a real long time and forgot how to smile the right amount. I rubbed my neck, trying to think of something else to say. Can I ask, how did I get here? Oh, like I said, I found you in the woods not too far from here. Oh, jeez. Really? I knew I was tired, but I couldn't have possibly. Huh. I did step in something. Something important. Familiar pinpricks crept up my skin. Home. I need to go home. Michael stiffened as he grabbed my shoulder. Uh, never mind that. You'd fallen unconscious from a, a heat stroke. Heat stroke? No. No, that wasn't what happened. I. I wasn't. I was fine up until. Michael shook his head insistently, waiting close. No, 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 Firefly. You weren't fine at all. If I hadn't found you when I did. Well. Who knows what could have happened? You could have gotten injured, or attacked by a wild animal. There's dangers in these woods, you know. No, he was right. You had been so foolish. How did you think you could do this on your own? Searching for your cat in the middle of the woods. And to go in without bringing any water? Passing out from heat stroke of all things? How could you have been so stupid? And I shook my head, brain too foggy to pick apart my thoughts. He sounded confident, so why should you doubt him? W well, if it means anything, I'm glad you were there. Michael relaxed, hand on his lap once more. He grinned at me. So am I, lion. I'm definitely glad I found you. His eyes were hidden fully behind his unruly hair, but I couldn't help feeling how intensely they were fixated onto me as he said that. The hairs on the back of my neck stood. Uh, sure. Without a distraction, I've only just realized how uncomfortable I was sitting still. The blanket on me was starting to itch just as the desperate need to get home began to rise in me again. Um, this was interesting, but I should really get going now. Wait! My host jumped up from the bed before I could. Uh, I mean, you can't... I can't just let you wander around the woods this late. P please stay a little longer. This guy is... Quite suspect. But my- Come. He grabbed my hand and led me across the room. We stepped into the kitchen, a fragrant smell of cooked potatoes and meat hanging in the air. Two plates had been set out on a small circular table, complete with utensils and mugs of tea. I wasn't expecting guests today. So the food is nothing fancy, but join me for dinner? He looked so hopeful, ears drooping. You'd feel bad if you had to say no. Alright. 
We'll stay for dinner. Michael's jaw dropped for a second before he quickly recovered. I... Yes, of course. Here. Here, come sit. I'll serve up the cottage pie in a minute. I sat as instructed, my stomach rumbling something fierce as the smell was the only thing I could focus on. Yes, this was definitely the right choice. What was so important that you had to leave so soon? The outside world can wait. You could stay here and enjoy my company. What? Oh, actually, I should ask, are you okay with meat for dinner? I can make something else for you if that's not your preference. We'll say that we're okay for meat. Oh, okay. You'll be having the same dinner as me then. Michael pattered about the small kitchen with an almost giddy excitement. He put on a pair of knitted oven mitts, humming as he stooped down and pulled out a steaming tray of pie from the wood stove. The smell. It filled out the kitchen in an instant as he brought it to the table, my stomach rumbling louder in response. I'm pretty sure Michael could hear it, but he just smiled as he served up our portions. He discreetly cut me a bigger piece, which I was grateful for. It looked so good. Hmm, it's like a shepherd's pie. The crust was a nice golden color, streaked with crisp lines and garnish. The meat and veggie filling looked absolutely delectable, the savory sauce leaking onto the plate. My mouth was watering, unsurprising considering the fact I haven't eaten all day. Careful now, it's still hot. It was fair advice, but I didn't wait more than two blows before biting into my first forkful. Ah, it was definitely way too hot to eat straight from the oven. Michael kept a polite expression, the corner of his mouth lifting as I panted with the pieces still in my mouth. He gave me a few seconds to recover, a bow planted on the table. Is it good? I nodded vigorously, even though my buds were burning. Hmm, hmm. I couldn't taste anything. He laughed. It's usually better on the second bite. I slowed down, hand on my mouth as Michael poked his fork into his own slice. I tentatively blew on the pie to make sure it was cool before taking another bite. He was right. The second bite was a lot better. The seasoned potato crust was nice and crisp on top. Cheesy and creamy in the middle. The savory meat filling was well cooked and bursting with flavor. Every bite felt like home. My host watched me enjoy the meal from across the table. Do you like it? Yeah. This tastes amazing, Michael. He flushed from the compliments, rubbing the back of his neck. <laughs> I'm glad. I like to think of myself as a decent cook, but I've never been able to get anyone else's opinion on that. Do you like baking in particular? Hmm, not always. I usually go for simple dishes, with any ingredients available. I nodded amicably, though didn't say much else. I was more focused on scarfing down dinner, which thankfully Michael didn't seem to mind. The overall atmosphere was nice and homely, and I could hear Michael tapping his feet from underneath the table. I guess he was that happy to have someone stay for dinner. It did seem like he lived alone, judging from the surroundings in his cabin. So, I'm kinda curious. He perked up instantly, his focus solely on me. What made you want to live all the way out here? Oh, well, when you lick like me, 
it's kind of easier just to live out of sight from everyone else. A pang of guilt shot through my chest. I was giving him a hard time about how he looked, too. He must have sensed it clear as day on my face. N not that you're one of them. You've actually been nicer than most. Though I wonder if... His smile turned strained. Never mind. My point is, it's better here than anywhere else. Why don't you try the tea, Firefly? He seemed uncomfortable now, easing into a different topic. It's probably best to follow along. Oh, sure. I reached out towards my mug, only to push it off the edge with my clumsy fingers. Wait. I bent over the side to grab it, fully expecting it to fall just out of reach and land on the floor into broken pieces. It never did. Instead, a long green appendage was twisted around the ceramic mug, securely keeping it in place. Not even a drop had fallen out. My eyes trailed along the length of it until I pinpointed that it came from behind Michael, the rest of it partially hidden beneath his cardigan. Michael? Is that... yours? I... Michael buried his face into his hands, the strange appendage from before lowering to his side, mug in tow. I'm sorry, Lion. I think... I think it's time I was honest. He lifted his head, fingers carting his hair back to reveal his eyes. I froze as two... No, no. Multiple pairs of irises stared right into mine before darting to the side and avoiding my gaze. I know it's a lot to take in, but... This is who I really am. P please please don't be scared. I won't start becoming a bit afraid until you start doing some foo-foo voodoo demon shit to make me not go home. So we're, we're cool. I swallowed audibly, willing myself to not look away. He seemed to be holding his breath as I gripped the edge of the table. It felt unsettling every time he blinked those eyes in succession, even when he wasn't looking at me. Was it real? It had to be. Everything about him suddenly made so much more sense. The isolation. The avoidant behavior. He looked freaky, yes. But he also looked sad. I... I swallowed thickly. I'm not scared. Michael's many pupils blew wide, dilating like an excited wildcat. It sent a shiver up my spine. Okay. Maybe just a little bit scared. Ah, s sorry. He hastily grabbed an empty plate and hid behind it, shoulders scrunched up despite his stature. Would it help if I just hide it? I, I could fix my hair like before, if that's what you prefer. His voice was muffled behind the ceramic barrier between us. It was kind of endearing. I slowly reached out to touch his hand, the slight brush of my fingertips making him jump in place. Michael. Yeah? Can you put that down? He slowly lowered the plate. His eyes were still darted to the side, avoiding me. C can you look at me? Don't look at me like that. Sorry, I just can't stop looking. This was so awkward. His hands were shaking. I looked down at the mug still floating next to him, hanging on for dear life. I reached over and plucked it straight out of his grasp. 
I attentively took a sip, noticing how Michael was watching me over the rim of the mug. The taste was mildly spicy, with an almost earthly bite to it. I recognized it instantly as ginger tea. It's almost room temperature, but it's still pretty good. Huh? You wanted me to try the tea, right? I... I like it. So, thank you. Uh, oh, I'm glad. Michael relaxed back into his seat, following my lead as I picked up my fork once more. The silence didn't last long as Michael fidgeted. Uh, are you really okay with this? With me? I gave him a once over really taking in his features. It's very different than what I'm used to, but I think I can learn to like it. Is that weird to say? I mean, you're not bad to look at. Am I... Am I, am I flirting again? Is this another addition to the pretty boy harem? It's actually kind of... Um... Damn it, damn it, damn it. What, what do I say? <sighs> I'm hitting on people. <laughs> I'm hitting on people again. You know, it's funny because... Look, I'm comfortable with my sexuality. I am a straight male. But I feel like the more I dive into these horror games, the more I end up just hitting on other men. And eventually I'm going to have this like massive, a massive harem that can compare to an army of beautiful men that I have brought together with my riz and grace and whatever you want to call it. I have no problem with that. So yeah, M Michael can join too. Sure. Why not? Let's go. H hot? You're not referring to my temperature, are you? No, I am not. Oh. He looked confused, but seemed embarrassed anyway. My point is, your appearance shouldn't matter. You've been nothing but kind to me so far. I'd be the worst kind of person to judge someone based on how they look. I haven't known you that long, but you seem like a good person. You're fine, Michael. I smiled at him. We're fine. I... I see. He fidgeted some more before nodding, smiling a bit. Th thanks Lion. I'll cherish this moment forever. He beamed at me as he enthusiastically went back to eating his food. That was... something. We continued with a bit of small talk, mostly stories about Shishi or snippets from my personal life. Yeah, about Shishi. Michael hung onto every word I said, not bothering to elaborate much about himself despite my burning curiosity. I could tell he was extremely insecure about his appearance, so it's probably best I keep my questions to myself for tonight. We cleared up the kitchen in relative silence, Michael storing away the breast of the pie as I washed the dishes by the sink. Being out here in this remote cabin, I wondered how he had running water. Maybe I'll ask him later. So, thanks for dinner. Thanks for the company. Oh, and please, take the bed tonight. But, but... Uh, ah, you're my guest, and I'm the host. Take the bed, okay? Uh, alright. I'll be out of your hair first thing in the morning. Michael got quiet staring at the floorboards. With his hair out of the way, 
I could finally read his expressions. He did seem... upset. Is... that okay? I... I do need your help, though. I'm pretty sure I'm just going to get lost again on my own. His tail flicked behind him. Yeah, I'll bring you home tomorrow morning. I heaved a sigh of relief. Thanks, Michael. I'll see you in the morning. Yeah. Um, good night, Lion. Good night, Michael. He seemed really happy being able to say that. I plopped myself down onto Michael's bed, getting comfy beneath the blankets. Michael was gathering some blankets of his own to make a makeshift bed on the floor in front of the fire. He had an impressive collection of knitted items, a comfortable nest forming in the center of the room. My eyes trailed after his tail, now out in the open as it flicked and swayed. Kinda like a cat. I miss Shishi. Now with a full stomach, dozing off came easy. I didn't even realize how tired I was. I listened to the gentle cracking of the fire, my vision darkening. Alright. I know that I might have hit on you a little bit earlier, but I think you need to take a couple steps back, my guy. <laughs> this is not very comfortable. But good night to you too. A soft humming invaded my dreams, stirring me awake. I blinked my eyes open to unfamiliar surroundings, swaddled in a blanket that clearly wasn't mine. W where Oh. I spotted the familiar figure of my host seated on a stool in front of the fire, hands deftly working on the green scarf bundled on his lap. His back was towards me, but I caught glimpses of his fingers as the needles softly clicked between the yarn. He looked incredibly adept at using them, the rhythmic movements almost hypnotic as the fibers wound together into an intricate pattern. I slowly stirred into a sitting position, rubbing at my eyes. The movement quickly caught his attention, ear flicking in my direction, before his eyes trained on to me. Just like last night. His pupils blew up as we made eye contact. His expression lit up the instant he saw me. Lion, hey, I'm glad you're finally awake. You looked so tired. I didn't want to disturb you until you've gotten enough rest. Good morning, Michael. Good morning, Lion. Did you sleep well? Ugh. I was still too groggy to answer his question, a yawn slipping out as I stretched. He smiled kindly, a soft chuckle under his breath. Like a baby, then. He pointed over his shoulder to the door beside the fireplace, tilting his head towards it. You can freshen up in the bathroom if you'd like, while I start on making us some food. I'd have eaten breakfast by now, but I'd want you to join me while the food is still hot. How do eggs and toast sound? Eggs and toast sound fine to me. Great. I'll see you in the kitchen then. He tucked away his knitting materials and set it aside. Oh, I also have a surprise for you after breakfast. It's... It's not the most exciting surprise, but, um, just join me when you're ready. Oh boy. He ducked into the kitchen without another glance. 
I could hear his boots thud about the floorboards, cabinets opening and closing in succession in the kitchen. I suppose that's my cue. I rolled out of bed, leaving the warmth of Michael's blankets, and trotting over to the door Michael pointed out. Did something happen to me overnight, and maybe I'm about to find out in the mirror? In this bathroom? We'll see. Stepping inside, I didn't know what I was expecting when he said he had a bathroom, but it was surprisingly spacious. Everything looked like it was carved and polished out of wood. He seemed to have everything you'd find in a modern bathroom. A sink with a cabinet, a shower and a tub, and even a toilet. Curious, I crept over to the toilet in particular, inspecting it. There wasn't a tank like you'd expect where the water would be stored. Instead, there was a compartment to the side full of sawdust and a scoop. I expected it to have at least a bit of a smell, but it was surprisingly odorless. There was even a roll of toilet paper on the side. It was no flushing system, but it was hygienic. Michael must have done his research. Walking over to the sink, I stared at the faucet before hesitantly twisting it. I jumped when I heard the rush of water pouring in, swirling in the basin before disappearing to who knows where. Wow. Why am I impressed by a damn functioning bathroom sink? I helped with the dishes last night. I already knew Michael had plumbing. Shaking my head. I finished freshening up and headed to the kitchen. Okay, my suspicions are so far not true. Michael looked up as I answered, a steaming kettle in his hand with two empty mugs on the counter. It might have been the lighting, but he was taller than I remembered. Sounds kinda suspect. Glancing to the table, I could see he already finished plating up our food. Oh wow, you work fast. Michael looked proud of himself. Can't have my guests stay on an empty stomach. Go on, have a seat. I'll join you in a moment. I returned his smile and sat down, stomach grumbling as I looked at our plates. Once again, Michael was generous with the serving sizes. This looks like the Gordon Ramsay style eggs that I also tend to make. Fat slices of bread were toasted perfectly with crisp buttered sides, though sometimes I will use uh, smoked salmon as that's the first time I watched him make this dish, but that's when I like to get really fancy. The scrambled eggs looked tantalizing. The smell of savory herbs wafting into my nose. My mouth watered. Michael sat down a steaming mug beside me before settling into his own seat. Peeking above the rim, I could see small flowers floating about, tinting the water yellow. It faintly smelled of apples. I recognized the yellow dried pellets on the tea packaging I've seen before. Oh. Chamomile. He nodded. I hope you like it. I'm sure I will. His smile widened, his tail swaying at the tip by his feet. He seemed more relaxed, showing his natural features this morning. Any trace of panic and hesitation from last night were gone, replaced by a look of contentment. Michael bit into his toast, and I followed suit. The food was as delicious as I expected. The chunk of toast I bit into was heavenly, the butter sweet on my tongue, and the eggs. Something about simple home-cooked food is just the best. Michael was happy to eat in silence, occasionally looking up at me as I enjoyed my food. He'd smile when our eyes met, his bottom pair narrowing into a happy squint. I wonder if he'd be open to some questions. Hey. Hmm? 
Do you mind if I ask? We will save here. Hmm. What's it like living in the woods? I still can't believe how cozy you've managed to make it, considering the whole middle of nowhere thing. It wasn't like this when I found it. No. It was a major, uh, fixer upper? So the cabin was abandoned. I never would have guessed. Yeah, I'm really happy I get to live somewhere permanent for once. It's not much, but it's home. What's it like? Peaceful, quiet. I do like it a lot. The forest provides me with everything I need. A and nobody bothers me for the way I look out here. His ears twitched slightly. Sometimes you just happen to end up where it's most convenient for you and everyone else. The way he avoided my eyes as he said that gave me the impression there's something more to it. Like his home wasn't just out of convenience, but a fear of something else. Rejection, perhaps. Or something worse. Uh, anyways, I don't really have anything to say about it. Unless there's something specific you want to ask. He doesn't think about his answer much before beaming at me. What about you? I know you've told me a little bit about yourself, but... What's it like being you? I scoffed, waving a hand. Please, I'm the least interesting person in this room. Trust me. His eyes were shining in earnest as he leaned forward. Tell me anyway. Oh, well. I told him about my life. At least the parts I was comfortable with sharing. Just like last night, his eyes didn't leave my face, occasionally darting about my features and interest. The direct ogling was making me nervous, but I suppose I was doing the exact same thing when it was his turn to talk. Eventually, I came to the topic of my job, and the woes of living in modern capitalism. I am a bit jealous. You have the whole cottage core aesthetic practically perfect. His face morphed into a confused pout. Cottage core? I explained it to him in my own words. Oh, you're saying you want to live the way I do? Out in the woods? I nodded without hesitation. I mean, I wouldn't mind showing you the ropes. His tone seemed strangely lilted. What do you mean? Never mind. Anyways, I don't get what the appeal is, but it's not easy either, you know. The forest provides, but it's up to me to make use of it. Starting out was... A dark look crossed over his face then, as if reliving a bitter memory. Rough. But I'm built for survival. I feel like asking him to elaborate would make things... awkward. I decided to veer the topic into a different direction. Doesn't it get lonely? Hmm... Sometimes, but I'm used to it. He smiled, his eyes lighting up. Besides, I have you at the moment, don't I? I never thought I'd enjoy having someone around. You must be really special. Oh, we're just going through the rest of the questions, okay. So how do you have, how do you have plumbing in your house, is what I asked. I know it's a silly question, but I can't stop thinking about it. 
Oh, you were wondering about that. The embarrassed look on my face was probably enough of an answer. Aw, well, it's nothing fascinating. It's just rainwater I've got stored above the cabin. Just rainwater. He nodded. I detected a hint of pride as he continued. It's actually a recent installment, believe it or not. Granted, the project took a while. Gathering materials, figuring out the tools, finding the right instruction manuals. Plus, I had to figure out where to store the water tank. And don't worry, I installed a filtration system, so it's safe for us to use. I check in every few weeks to make sure nothing is contaminated. That sounded daunting especially considering he lived all the way out here in the woods. You did all that on your own. I kinda had to. Uh, anyway, it took a whole lot of calibrating and adjusting, but it really worked out. And now that I think about it, I'm glad you get to be comfortable here during your stay, too. Does that answer your question? Where'd you learn to do all that? I had to figure out a lot of things on my own. There was a faint hint of exhaustion in his eyes. But to answer your question, I go to libraries a lot. It's where I learned about a majority of things. The fact that he even ventured into buildings at all really surprised me. And if I'm real lucky, they have all these neat DIYs and workshop manuals archived for anyone to browse through. It took a while to figure everything out. A really long time, actually. But hey, I had nothing but time. And it paid off. I'm considering upgrading the toilet next, but for now, the composting setup works fine. Learned about that in an old camping guide. He paused to take a breath, as if he hadn't talked this much in a while. Ugh, I'm rambling, but that's how I did it. Is there anything else you want to ask? Wait, you've been to libraries. His ears perked up, posture straightening. Oh yeah, I can't tell you enough how much books have helped me. I've made it this far only because I quickly figured out how to read. Well, figured out that I can read. Do you visit often? In my early days? Any chance I could get. Nowadays, I stick to my side of the forest, though. Gotta make sure people don't wander too far off than they're meant to. I paused at my chewing at the teasing lilt in his voice. Hey. I'm joking. Anyways, if you're wondering what I do about this, he gestured towards his face. I just have to make sure everything is covered. You'd be surprised how little people pay attention to me when I bundle up just right. Do people not give you trouble? He shrugged nonchalantly. Small town libraries are usually so empty from my experience. And people just mind their own business there. Huh. I guess that's true. I can't remember the last time I visited a library. I guess libraries would be Michael's equivalent to the World Wide Web. I should introduce him to the internet sometime. Actually, maybe not. Not without parental controls. Finally satisfied, I nodded and went back to eating my food. How did you learn to cook? Cottage pie is a pretty complicated recipe. I just wonder if anyone taught you how to cook. I'd be lucky if someone could teach me how to make boiled eggs, Firefly. But it was trial and error, mostly. My earlier endeavors were, uh, pretty much inedible. I picked up a thing or two about cooking, though, 
so your taste buds aren't going to fall victim to any tasty creations like in my early days at least. Um, speaking of, did you enjoy dinner last night? Of course I did. You're a really good cook, Michael. I'm... I'm glad. It probably wasn't obvious, but I'm really happy I got to cook for you. I don't get guests often in case you couldn't tell. I should ask you to cook for me more every day then. He grinned at my joke, looking pleased. I'd be happy to. I chuckled as I took another bite. So what's your favorite thing to cook? He lit up at the question. Fried mushrooms. Fried mushrooms. Yeah. And there's plenty to find and it's easy to make. Huh. I do remember finding a patch of mushrooms yesterday. They smelled pretty funky though. You... remember that. This Michael guy has some ulterior... intentions. Why wouldn't I remember that? Hmm, what was that? Nothing. Anyways, mushrooms were the only thing I had for a while, before figuring out I could eat other stuff like roots and veggies. Do you forge all your ingredients? Mostly. The times I figured out how to catch fish and hunt game were the best of my life, I'll tell you that. My first taste of meat? He did an awkward version of a chef's kiss, as if mimicking something he saw on television once. Mamma Mia. Did you mean to say Mamma Mia? Yeah, that. He continued before I could even dwell on it for a second longer. But, nothing beats what you humans are able to make. You guys go nuts with ingredients. Rice was a challenge. It's a precious ingredient since I have to actually get some from a store. But once I figured out how to make it nice and fluffy, I consider it a special treat. I did a double take. You... Go to the store. Yeah? Well, where else would I get it? I thought you... Would grow it yourself. Or something. He laughed as I flushed in embarrassment. It's flattering you think I'm even capable of something that impressive. But no. There's only so much the forest can provide. But... What about money? We're talking about human currency, right? Otherwise, how would you even... Do you actually have a job? A thought occurred to me. Or did you steal it? He almost looked offended. Do you take me for a criminal? No. But that would mean... Then how? Michael bit into his toast, his two eyes winking in mischief. I have my ways, Firefly. What's that supposed to mean? I'm starting to know a lot more about Michael. He didn't directly say it, but it felt like he was lonelier than he was letting on. Not to mention how he managed to make a home for himself, all on his own. I had to wonder if he had anyone at all. Do you have any family around? Family? His expression turned solemn for a moment before he looked sheepish. Remind me how that works again? I get the concept, based on some books I've read. I don't have what you call parents, if that's what you're asking. My mouth dropped open in shock. No parents. He shrugged and took another bite of toast. Not that I recall. Then how did... What's it like? Living with so many people like you in such close proximity. Huh? That's how it works, right? You and other humans living in one house. And you have this, uh... 
Denna thing that makes you relate to the rest. That's what makes a family, right? Was he talking about DNA? His definition threw me off, but I had to answer somehow. Not just that. Family is... Is Michael trying to make me his family? Um... Yeah, people you're related to, like your mom and your dad and your siblings and relatives. He nodded at my explanation. I couldn't help thinking that he looked somewhat relieved. If that's the case, I definitely don't have any family around. As far as relations go, I'm the only one of me there is and ever will be. He sounded determined about that fact. So you're not... I assume you're not a family person, then. He looked amused at my question. Definitely not. I found that surprising. He seemed like the type. But I guess I couldn't just assume that. Although... He twiddled with his mug. His brows furrowed as he stared at it. It does sound nice knowing you have that undeniable bond with someone. Something to link you with others, just underneath the surface. The kind of relationship that makes it unique and precious, wouldn't it? He looked at me then, his eyes almost full of longing. But some things just aren't meant for me. What do you mean? He smiled, shrugging. Nothing you have to worry about, Firefly. What a strange man. To be fair, everyone's definition of family could be different. What about you? What's your definition of family? Michael looked surprised I asked him that question. I don't know. I've never had one. And I think your answer just confused me more. Well, if you ever figure it out, let me know. Michael stared at the remaining crumbs on the plate before he nodded, avoiding my gaze. Sure. We both fell quiet, the lull in conversation blanketing us in a comfortable silence. All this family talk. It reminded me of the reason why I'm out here in the first place. To look for my beloved cat. A sight I might never be able to see again. I couldn't help the sinking feeling in my chest. The growing pit in my stomach. I wish. I wish I was able to find Shishi. You would have loved him. Michael opened his mouth to say something, but changed his mind. My voice warbled as a lump formed in my throat. Sorry. I just miss him so much. I keep thinking, if I just went looking for him sooner, maybe I would have been able to find him by now. He was quick to speak up. You did your best, Firefly. No one else could have gone to the lengths that you did. You almost risked getting yourself. I'm sure wherever he is, he is doing okay. You really think so? I, I know so. His voice was laced with a confident assurance, despite the worried look on his face. I nodded with a quiet sniff. I hope so. He's just important to me, is all. Michael looked like he wanted to reach across the table for me, but sighed instead. Actually, I'm sorry, Lion. Are we finally about to be revealed the truth? I should tell you. Um. Maybe I do have family, now that I think about... 
Michael, you son of a bitch. That was the surprise I mentioned before. Wait, really? He nodded. Are you done? I could take you to go meet them right now. I looked down at my plate. During the conversation, I didn't even realize I'd finished the meal. Yeah, I'm done. His movements were quick, stacking our empty plates and mugs and setting them in the sink. He grasped my hand before I could say another word, pulling me up and heading outside with me in tow. As the door swung open, I could only see Forrest ahead, before he tugged me along as he rounded the side of the cabin. Almost immediately, my peripherals were assaulted with greens on both sides. I figured he was the type to grow his own vegetables, but to see it in person as confirmation was a whole different thing. With Michael leading the way, I only had a moment to take in the surrounding garden. He had marked the different plots with messy drawings on small wooden signs jutting out of the dirt. Carrots, lettuce, potatoes, trellises of tomatoes and beans. I wouldn't have been able to differentiate one plant to another without the signs. Even the chamomile from our tea just now grew abundant close by. The small buds swang gently. I bumped into Michael as he suddenly stopped, the man looking over his shoulder to beam at me. We reached what looked like a fenced-off area, with a bit of netting stretching all around. He stepped aside, watching me as my eyes widened. Chickens. Three fat, happy little hens strutted about like they owned the place. As he entered through the gate, the hens swarmed over in an instant at Michael's feet, circling him and pecking at his boots. Ladies, meet Lion. Lion, these are Marwar, Sansiu, and Primrose. Or as I like to call them, Marmar, Sunny, and Rosie. He ducked to pick one up fluffing up her feathers as he smiled. He gently scratched the hen's little head, which I assumed was rosy. She practically melted at his pampering, eyes sliding shut. The other two flapped their wings in a huff, and went about their business once more. Michael leaned closer, beckoning me to pet Rosie. She was so soft. Rosie's the oldest. She doesn't lay eggs anymore, but I couldn't bring myself to, um, you know. So, I brought her some friends. Marmar came first. Sunny's a more recent addition. What do you think? Do we make a good family? I laughed and nodded, watching as Rosie nuzzled into Michael's chest. I didn't expect chickens of all things. Were you... expecting something else? I was expecting it to be... someone else. Oh. Heh, <laughs> no. When you look like me, people generally don't stick around. There's that negative self-talk again. You don't even look that bad. His eyes flicked to mine, a look of pleasant surprise crossing his face. You really think so? Yeah. You can't be that naive, Firefly. I mean it. He let out a polite scoff as he scratched Rosie's head absently. You genuinely believe people wouldn't run away at the sight of me. Well, I didn't. His smile turned smug, the corner of his lips lifting just a bit. Of course you didn't. Because you couldn't. Shoot. He wasn't wrong. I was pretty much paralyzed in his bed when we first met. But, but, I still don't think you look that bad. Is that so? Describe me then. 
What? You heard me. Look at me and describe what you see. For a second, I thought he was being condescending, but looking at his eyes, all I could see was a bit of playfulness. Um... He looked at me expectantly, eyes shining. You're... tall? Go on. You have blonde hair. He gave an amused squint, his left ear twitching. What else? You have green skin and a tail. He chuckled, though there was no malice in it. But that's not all, is it? He definitely expected me to say it straight. Oh, fine. So you don't look human. So what? He hummed absently. As I was saying, animals generally don't care if you look like a monster. My heart twisted at his words. His passive nonchalance somehow makes it even worse. Michael, you're not a mo- A tug at my shoelace caught my attention. A light brown hen stood at my feet, her beady eyes shining. Sunny flapped her wings almost expectantly. Aw, I think she likes you. Go ahead, pick her up, gently, like how I did with Rosie. I hesitated, but slowly lowered myself to cup Sunny by her wings. Lifting her up, she was quick to nestle herself until she was comfortably tucked under my arms. I could feel her wings wiggling as she nuzzled into my side. So cute. Michael's gaze softened as I cooed at the chicken, mimicking her small clucks. S so um, did it help? Cheering you up, I mean. Oh. So that's what this was. A fuzzy feeling bloomed in my chest as he looked at me, chicken in his arms, and concern on his face. A little bit, yeah. Only a little? I snickered, rolling my eyes. Okay, mister. A lot. That's more like it. His proud grin was infectious. I couldn't help smiling back. We spent a bit more time with the hens, petting them until they were satisfied. Michael even showed me the spot where they liked to have their dust baths. Little chicken-shaped holes scattered about in the dry soil underneath the coop. Once the gals had enough of us, we refilled their water container before leaving. He left them some treats, procuring them straight out of his pockets before shutting the gate. The girls' excited chatter over the food faded as we made our way back inside his cabin. I sat by his bed as he crouched down by the fireplace. From the window, I could see the sun outside was getting higher. It might be close to afternoon now. Hey, Michael. Hmm? He looked up at me from where he was stoking the fire. I rubbed my arms, unsure where to place my gaze. I think it's a good time for me to go now. I didn't. My expression fell, but I caught myself quickly. He'd done his best to cheer me up. It'll be inconsiderate towards him to leave in a bad mood. I might have to accept that I'll never see Shishi again. I think it's better if I focus on moving on. He was quiet for a moment, hands in his pockets. If you say so. But you don't have to leave just yet. We've still got plenty of daylight left, and there's some places I want to show you. Won't you come with me? I had to decide. Oh jeez, what the hell was that? I didn't choose anything. <laughs> I promise I'll take you home right after. He took another step towards me. Please, Firefly? I didn't want to say it, but he looked desperate. Okay, okay. I'll go with you. 
The joy on his face was shining bright as a billboard. Great. Let me get our stuff. He disappeared into the kitchen, returning with my backpack in one hand and a satchel on the other. He passed it to me as he walked by towards the front door. Huh. I almost forgot I had this. Rifling through my bag, I found cat treats, Shishi's collar, a broken compass, and... My phone. The battery was dead, though. Still, that's one less thing to worry about. I checked through my bag once more, finding an empty water bottle. I frowned, distinctly remembering I forgot to pack water from my trip. Or at least, Michael told me I did. Didn't I? You ready? I don't know if I trust this dude with the crossbow. I looked up at Michael, startling when I spied the large crossbow in his hands. He followed my gaze and shrugged, albeit with a nervous smile, like he'd been caught doing something he shouldn't be. He quickly strapped the weapon to his back and out of sight. Don't worry, I'm not going to use it unless necessary. I would hope not. He chuckled at my indignant tone. You think I'm going to let you out of the woods without guaranteeing your safety? I made a promise to get you home, so this is just extra precaution. You don't think it's a bit... much. Better safe than sorry, Firefly. He did have a point. If anyone knew these woods and the kind of danger it held, it'd be Michael. I glanced over him again, noticing he changed his oversized cardigan for something more outdoor appropriate. His eyes tracked mine, his shoulders stiffening as a tint spread across his face. So, so shall we? He opened the door and waved me out. I stepped outside to glance around his front yard. The landscape wasn't anything special. It was actually left quite plain, just thick with trees and foliage. Only paths of dirt and flattened grass clued me in the roots Michael would use as he comes and goes, webbing in all directions, trailing to the front door. Come to think of it, anyone passing through would be able to spot Michael's house if they squinted through the trees carefully enough. I guess he was right that nobody's walked through this area in years. I heard a lock turn before Michael joined me by my side. He smiled wide before tipping his head in a direction, making sure I was behind him before he started walking. I was hesitant, but followed suit. It was quiet as we traveled, save for the sounds of nature calling out around us. The weather was bright and warm, the sun casting pretty rays through the gaps in the trees. I had to admit, enjoyable as it was, the bird calls and rustling of leaves as we walked somewhat brought bad memories. Yesterday was miserable. I was lost, tired, and hungry. There was a chance I wasn't going to make it out alive. I watched Michael's back as he led the way, the man barely paying any mind to his surroundings. His ear would occasionally flick back in my direction, but overall, he seemed confident on where to go. Having Michael as my guide home was definitely a great assurance. It made me even more grateful he'd found me when he did. I sighed and shook off the negative feelings, keeping pace while appreciating the fresh air. I stepped up next to my companion, willing my voice to speak after plenty of silence. This is actually kind of nice. Hmm? Um, a good nature walk. I coughed into my fist, feeling embarrassed. I don't go outside as often as I should. Michael smiled kindly. I'm glad I get to bring you then. Yeah, feels different when you know where you're going. Actually, where are we going? 
He sensed my nervousness and laughed. Don't worry. We're almost there. I looked up and saw it before he even pointed it out. A clearing in the distance, the trees growing strangely sparse in that area. I held my breath as I noticed the grass slowly started to dot with flowers, delicate blooms swaying here and there in the breeze. As we got closer, Michael watched me as my mouth dropped open, a knowing twinkle in my eyes. It was breathtaking. A secluded little meadow of flowers, lit up by beams of light, making the scenery resemble a page from a forgotten fairy tale. Butterflies fitted about in pairs, their wings flickering and complementing the surreal yet enchanting ambience of the whole place. Michael let me gawk some more before walking ahead, turning to face me before sitting down to relax on the grass. He slipped off his satchel and laid it on the grass by his side, along with his crossbow. I blinked out of my stupor and approached him, spinning around to drink everything in before plopping myself down next to him. So, what do you think? Pretty, isn't it? I nodded dumbly, before finally glancing to face him, the man's gaze on me softening as our eyes met. A butterfly approached us rapidly, making me flinch on instinct. It landed on his finger as he held it out, its wings flapping gently. He smiled at the dainty creature, a fond look in his eyes before he held it out towards me. Do you like butterflies, lion? We'll just save here and let's see. So I actually think I can't read these until I highlight them due to my monitor. So I'll have to figure that out sometime. Um, yeah, we love butterflies here. Why not? I do. I think they're so pretty. This is, this is amazing, Michael. His usual prideful smirk was absent, replaced instead with a shy smile. I'm glad you like it. The sun was at its peak now, the air getting warmer as minutes passed. The leafy canopy over us provided enough cover for us to not overheat. Michael picked a flower with his other hand and placed it in my palm, his tail looping loosely around us both as my cheeks darkened. He closed his eyes and leaned back further, the butterfly still resting on his hand. My ears caught a soft rumbling before I realized it was coming from his direction. I almost wanted to ask, but I didn't want to ruin the moment. My gaze dropped as I twirled the flower in my hand, holding the stem delicately. The gesture felt platonic, but also romantic. I wonder if Michael was even interested in relationships. He'd been alone most of his life. He'd probably get tired of my presence sooner or later. Before I could contemplate further, the butterfly on Michael's finger took off, my gaze trailing after it as it left the sunlight and flew away into the woods. Which reminds me... Michael? Hmm? Don't get me wrong. This place is stunning. But is it okay if we go now? He straightened from his relaxed slouch. Why? We just got here. I chewed on my lip, hesitating. I... I love it here. I do. But I want to go home, Michael. Michael studied my face. Lion. Do you want to leave me that badly? What? No. I just... I... I need time to recover from losing Shishi. I know it's silly and dramatic, but knowing he won't be there when I get home. I trailed off, another shot of guilt and regret filling my chest. 
I just need to get it done with. I feel a hand rubbing my back. Michael nodded slowly, looking me in the eyes. His smile was gentle. That's okay. I understand. But maybe this place can help with that. It's a nice spot to nap in, isn't it? I picked it out just for you. Why don't you go ahead and lie down? His words made you sway. A sudden bout of sleepiness weighing heavy over your eyelids. He was right. It is a nice spot to nap in. Why were you in such a hurry? You yawned, laying back to stretch on the grass. The warmth from the ground seeped through your clothes, lulling you into a sense of comfort and safety. There you go. Just... Just spend some time with me. Is... Is Michael in my head? Just a bit more. Please. Uh, oh. Here's something else I could show you. He reached into his satchel. And pulled out a wooden box. It's called a kalimba. I blinked slowly, clarity coming back as I shook my head to pay attention. The box fit neatly in his hands, Michael holding it as if he were typing on a phone. I could see it had a hole in the middle, with thin strips of metal arranged in a triangular shape over it. What does it do? A proud smirk spread across his face. I'll show you. He began to pluck at the metallic prongs, a gentle ringing sound resonating with every flick of his thumbs. I couldn't recognize the song. He might have made it up himself. I closed my eyes, enjoying the tune. Michael gave a soft chuckle as he kept playing. Relax, and listen as long as you like, Firefly. A few minutes passed by with Michael plucking away at the instruments, the two of us sunbathing like two cats on a Sunday afternoon. I must have dozed, as the next thing I knew, I felt a nudge on my shoulder. Comfy? <sighs> he chuckled low when I refused to open my eyes. I mean, if you'd rather stay. My eyes shot open my whole body jerking to sit up. Michael glanced at me, Kalimba in his lap, and half a forget-me-not chain in his hands. What? I shook my head, slapping at my cheeks. I can't believe I fell asleep. I... I it's all right. He cut me off. His sigh was heavy. I was hoping... Never mind. He patted my shoulder, though his smile didn't reach his eyes. Thanks for being here with me. Maybe we can do this again sometime. If I ever see you again. Let's get you home. He rolled over to his feet and stood up, brushing off dirt and fixing his satchel. Come on. We gathered our things and set off into the unknown once more. Well, unknown to me, at least. Michael seemed to have a map of this place ingrained in his brain. You seem a bit sleepy still, so let's freshen up, okay? We walked a bit further away from the clearing, coming across a river. Compared to the rest of the path we walked, the area was shaded considerably, with a thick canopy of leaves over us. The flowing water looked inviting as I kneeled down by the bank, Michael idling close by. I dipped my hands in, eager to wash my face. The water was refreshing and cooled my heated skin in the afternoon sun. I pulled my hands back to see Michael peeking over my shoulder into my reflection, 
smiling with a faraway look on his face. He startled as our gazes met, Iris is darting away to look at himself instead. Immediately his expression changed. His ears flattened, a grimace twisting his features as his lips curled back. I had never seen such contempt in his eyes as I did then, staring at his own visage. He stepped away, retreating underneath the cover of a tree to lean against it with crossed arms. He doesn't notice me watching. I patted my hands dry on my shirt and approached him. You ready? Yeah. I stopped him before he could turn to leave. He looked at me with a questioning look, tipping his head. I hesitated. I wasn't the type to speak my mind directly. Most of the time, I'd keep things to myself and let things go by. But nobody should look at themselves and have that sort of reaction. Hey, you know you're not, um... I might as well be frank. You're not a monster, Michael. He looked taken aback. What, what makes you say that? I saw how you were looking at yourself. How you talk about yourself. N none of it is true. I keep telling you. You're more than just your appearance. I don't know what compelled me to do it, but I did it anyway. I reached for his hands and held them between us. His eyes widened at the contact. All it took was a day with you, and truthfully, I think you're the most amazing person I've ever met. He made a choked noise. I, I, I... I'm just some old nobody compared to you. That's, that's not... Shut up and listen. He promptly shut his mouth with an audible click of his teeth. From where I stand, you saved my life. You've taken care of me better than I could ever ask for from a stranger. That already proves to me you're not the monster you think you are. You're charming. You're smart, you're sweet, you're a million more wonderful things, but you are not a monster. I take a second to compose myself, lowering my voice. You may look different, Michael, but guess what? His multiple eyes stared into mine, ears flattening as if fearing the worst. That makes you all the more beautiful to me. His breath hitched. I could feel his hands squeezing mine, fingers trembling. It was like he forgot how to breathe. I realized my hands were getting sweaty. I pulled away hastily, scratching at my neck and avoiding his gaze. I could feel the blood rush to my face. I could dunk my whole head in the river and it probably let off steam. S sorry that came out of nowhere. It just didn't feel right if I didn't say anything. I hope you understand. An awkward silence passed between the two of us. Um, anyways. I caught him mumbling under his breath. I can't let you leave. What? I said... You can't leave. I mean, not without your cat, right? I frowned. I've already tried, Michael. Like you said, it was stupid for me to just wander off in the woods as if I'd find him through dumb luck. He paused, his fists clenching. But I haven't. Huh? I haven't tried. I know these woods better than anyone. I can try looking for him. But, but that means, that means you can't leave yet. Michael, I appreciate the offer, but I don't think I should stick around any longer. I have a job, and responsibilities, and, and... You hissed in pain, a sudden migraine overcoming your senses. 
you felt sick, your stomach wringing itself into knots. It felt like the world was wrapping around you as your legs wobbled. Your body buckled over as you resisted the urge to vomit. Holy shit, this dude moves fast. <laughs> Michael caught you as you slumped gracelessly to the ground, your head resting on his shoulder as he cradled you close. Hey, you don't look so good. Your vision doubled as he spoke, his speech oozing together words into an indecipherable mess. Are you okay? You need me to carry you home? Oh, jeez. Uh, <laughs> uh, yes, please? Okay, no problem. Just, just hang in there. Hang on to me. This fucking guy right here. I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. You don't deserve this. If I could just... Just one more day with you. I'd be the happiest man alive. Here we are. Let's get you tucked in. Um... I should give you some clothes. Especially since you'll be staying another night. You're okay with that, aren't you? That's all from Day 2 of Mushroom Oasis. More updates coming in the future. Wow. So, so wait a minute. Aren't there multiple endings to this game? At least I think there are. Let me, let me look real quick. Hold on, hold on. Okay, so there's three bad endings and one neutral ending. I have no idea what ending I got. Um, I'm very curious what kind of ending I got. Uh, perhaps I should come back in here and explore all the options that I did not choose. Uh, and see exactly what else is out there. Uh, this is of course only a demo. This is the first two days per the devs page. So there's definitely still quite a lot more in this game to discover. That being said, I thought this was a really nice game. I really enjoyed it. Uh, <laughs> I don't know if I want to include Michael and my pretty boy harem that I'm gathering together. Uh, seems like he's kind of, uh, not giving me much of a choice, if you will, in regards to whether he can be in the group or not, because he's, uh, not wanting me to leave. So, we'll figure out where this goes from here. Uh, be on the lookout as I may be hopping back into this demo to explore the other options, and there might be a couple more playthroughs, uh, in the near future. That all being said, this was a good suggestion. So, thank you to Lena Zuleta1477 for suggesting this game to me, as I will be looking forward to the full release. I also have to mention that, um, I realized that the developer for this game is the same one that created Lift Your Spirits, which is one of the very first visual novels that I played on this channel, uh, and that was another entry that I really enjoyed. So, glad I'm here and playing more of the developer's content. That all being said, if you enjoyed this video, go ahead and leave it a like, comment, subscribe, share the video out, or maybe even consider doing a combination of them. I would greatly appreciate that. And until next time, y'all have a great night.